Welcome back everyone to Youth in Mission. I'm so glad all of you are joining me today on this fine day that the Lord has given us. And I hope all of you prepare for the message today. And I'm doing this for the youth, not only for the youth, but for parents who need to teach their youth the right way to go. And all of us here are gathered today just to listen to what I've been reading and the Lord has given me. So today we're going to be talking about prayer. But before I start, I just want to tell something to the youth. Don't wait till you're older to to worship or start working for God because every day excuses will come. Oh, I'm going to read my Bible the other day. Excuses will always come. And the more you push God back, the more he will push back away from your life. And one day you figure out you're walking alone and you ask God, why did you leave me? But your whole youth, you've been ignoring him and it's never going to be the same. So I really hope the youth come together. Even in your youth, you can still worship and work for God like you've never worked before. Just know that God will bless you in your youth, that you sacrifice your time for him, that you're giving your all your time, all your strength into, you're pouring out your own strength and also with the strength of God, of course, into what He tell, he's telling you to do. So just know as youth, once you give your life to Christ, he will use you like never before. This message, as I said, is we're talking about prayer. Now, what is prayer? If we go to dictionary, if you have a dictionary, you can go ahead and read with me. Prayer is a solemn request for help or expression of things addressed to God or an object of worship. In this case, we are the worshiper. Now, what is the Bible telling us about prayer? Jesus is telling us that prayer is a private time between God and the worshiper. It's kind of the same thing, but Jesus is telling us it's private. Now, what is something that is private? Something that is private in a family is like not really a secret, but it's something only you would know or your family members might know. The people that are close to you might know, but not everybody's included into that. Of course, as Christians, we can go to church and pray in a place where we're all together because unity is what strengthens us. But also, Jesus is telling us it's a private time. Do you make time for God in your private moments? Or do you just spend it away watching videos, watching games, watching movies, eating, doing whatever you got to do? Make sure to make time for God. As youth, we're going back to school. As parents, we have jobs. As kids, we are growing up, we're developing. Of course, things will get in the way, but make time for God. In your jobs, if you have any free time, you go and pray. In your school, you're just doing your homework quietly. You pray on the inside. Prayer is not always, oh, Father God, I thank you. Oh, Father God, I thank you. Oh, screaming. No, prayer is a communication. It's a way we communicate with God. Prayer is the way that God made us to communicate with him. Of course, the Spirit is in us, and we have access to his His heart, to the heart, the, the Holy, what I'm trying to say is the Holy Spirit gave us access to the heart of God and to be able to hear the voice of God. But without prayer, there's no way we'll be able to communicate with our Father. As, as Christians and as worshipers, we are in a relationship with Christ, with our Father, and with the Holy Spirit. Even on, on earth, if you're in a relationship with someone, not only with the spouse, with the friend, with family members, with your father, with your mother, communication is a way we develop deeper feelings with each other, not only love, but to have admiration for that person or to get to understand that person deeply if you ask a couple who's been married for a long time they will tell you that communication was a way that they kept their relationship going and getting stronger is through communicating with each other communication was is like prayer in this instance as christians prayer is a way we get to know god Prayer is a way we get to talk to our Father. Not one day you go, you live in the same house with your Father, but you don't talk. That is not a way to go. Prayer, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 is telling us to pray continually. Do you pray every day? Do you make sure you take aside all your problems, all your situations, and make room for your Savior, make room for your Father who loves you? 
If you love someone, not one day you go without talking to them. If you love your father, not one day you go without talking to them. If you love your savior, not one day will you go without giving him things. Not one day will you say, oh, I'll do it the next day. No. Make time for God in every situation, in everything that you're going through. Make time for your father who truly loves you. And do you pray every day? Beloved, conforming, Romans is telling us to not conform into the pattern of this world, but be renewed, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Beloved, sinning isn't only a way to conform into the pattern of this world. You losing your your prayer time is a way we're conforming because a normal person would wake up, do whatever they got to do, go to work, do that, go to school, do that, act school activities, jobs, they take, take care of kids, cook and eat and go to sleep. But us Christians, we wake up, we pray. We, before we go out, we pray. When we come back, we pray. Before we sleep, we pray. Pray, continue, read his word. That's a way also we do not conform into the pattern of this world. Beloved, sinning isn't an only way we can conform to the world. Not keeping up with our relationship with Christ is also a way we are conforming into this world. And as Christians, it is telling us to be renewed. Renew ourselves every day through prayer. Prayer is the only way we can keep up with our Savior. Prayer is the only way we can communicate with God. Prayer is the only way we can survive on this earth. And do you leave all your problems in the hands of God? You are facing a problem. You go to God. You pray, oh, Father, look at this problem that I'm facing. It's eating me up. It's putting me in a dark place, Father God. But I'm coming to you because I know you can strengthen me because the Bible is telling us I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Do you go to God and bring your problems unto him and tell him, oh, Father, look at this. What is eating me up? Please help me. Strengthen me once more. That's a form of prayer as well. Do you bring your situation unto God or do you give up? Do you bring whatever that is eating you up unto God or do you give up? Beloved, pray continually. Even if that battle you're facing, you feel like you can't win, bring it unto God. Pray to your Father because your Father who loves you will speak to you, will answer you in one way or another. Bring your problem, cast your burdens unto the Lord for He cares for you. Pray continually. Do you leave your family in the hands of God? Do you leave your situation in the hands of God? And when you're praying, this it's another thing I developed through uh, doing some uh, research, I can say, is how do you pray and where do you pray? In this book of uh, Matthews, we can read that because some people like reading the Bible, like have proof. In the Bible, so um, they can say, Oh, she didn't read the Bible, she didn't read the Bible. Here I am. Here's a verse Matthew 6, no, Matthew 14. Actually, let's go ahead and find that. Matthew 14, verse 23. What is that telling us? Now, just a backstory. In the topic before uh, Jesus went to pray, he fed the 5,000 people. There was probably more than 5,000, but the Bible is telling us. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Beloved, do you only pray, beloved, do you only pray in public, or can you also pray in the, your, the comfort of your home? also in the private, in the secret time. Beloved, it's in this relationship we have with our Father, in this relationship we have with our Savior, don't live in hypocrisy, I can't even say it. Don't live in secret. By, by secret, I mean when you're in a relationship with someone. It's like you only praying in public is like, you show affection in front of others, but when you're alone, you completely ignore each other. You show love in front of other people. When people come to your house, you show that you love each other, but when they are gone, you completely start to ignore each other. I'm not saying to pray in public is bad. I'm also saying don't only pray in public. Also, 
find time in your own time to make time for God. The Bible is telling us that Jesus dismissed the crowd. He went to pray alone. Find your own mountainside where you and your Savior can speak with each other. Where you and your Savior, some things only God only reveals to us when there's no noises around. When it's completely silent, that's when you see God speaking to you. That's when visions will come. That's when uh, gifts of the Spirit will come. When you're in secrecy, when you're in this place where there's no noise, where there's no, where there's no distraction around you, God will speak to you. And how much do you pray? Like I already said, this is going back to the beginning. That's First Thessalonians five seventeen is telling us pray continually. Prayer is the only way to survive in this world. I realized when I went um, the first time I went to high school. Yeah, I was um, the first week I was on top. I was praying. I was reading my Bible. I was doing that for God. I was practicing because I play piano for my church. So I practiced and I was doing that and I was doing that then. After a couple of months into school, I realized I came back to myself to evaluate myself and I realized that I didn't even read my Bible for like a whole month. Beloved, imagine a Christian not reading the Bible for a whole month. And I was not really praying on my own. I would only pray in church. I would only pray in weekday prayers. And I realized that and whenever I used to say, oh, today I will pray, problems will always come up. Homework assignments, teachers saying, oh, you need to stay after school and things like that. And I would always push God aside and aside until one day I came to realize that what am I doing here? What went wrong? That's why when I say to pray continually means don't stop. You're facing a problem, you pray. You're going through things, you pray. Your children are facing situations where you think you can't help them, you pray. As us youth, you're, go, you're, fa you're in a friendship group where you don't feel like that's where you need to be. You pray to God and say, Father, give me a friendship group that I will be freely to talk about you, where they won't shut me down when I bring the name of Jesus Christ in. You pray to your father, Father, I'm dealing with this assignment, but I don't want to give all my focus onto this, this assignment and miss the time of prayer that I said I was going to pray. Help me on this. The Lord can help you and the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord made you for greatness. So pray. Pray continually and don't stop. Once you stop, that's when the devil comes in. Once you stop, that's when destruction comes in. Once you stop, that's when you feel like the things that you were doing every day, that's when you're finding it hard to even pray for five minutes. Once you stop praying, you will see how this world will truly come and cover you in a dark hole. Beloved, this, beloved, this world is full of corruption. I say this every day because it's true. The youth are doing whatever. The devil is turning uh, the Lord's truth into lies and people are following it. As in Judges is telling us at the, the beginning of Judges it said, and everyone was doing what they saw was right. And in the end of Judges, what did they say? And everybody was doing what they saw was right. Beloved, we've been living in that world. We've been living in that world and it's still this world that we're living in where the truth is being transformed into a lie and people are following, oh, it's my body, it's my choice, it's my thing, I want to do that, I want, I feel, I will follow my heart, but we love it, the Bible is telling us to not follow our heart because our heart is wicked. Don't follow your heart, follow your father. And when you pray, continually say to your father, oh, father, I don't want to follow my heart, but I want to follow your voice, I want to follow where you want me to go. And that is only being done through prayer. Because prayer is that important in the life of a Christian. Us, we can't go through life without praying. Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of God who is perfect in all ways. Who didn't need to pray. Who didn't even have to die for us. Who didn't have to come here for our sins. Who had no sin, but he died for our sins who had no darkness in him, 
who had no sin, but yet he came here. If Jesus, the Son of God, who is perfect in all ways, prayed, then what makes us think we can go in life without praying, without leaving everything in the hands of God? Beloved, once you step out of your door, don't worry, the devil will be there waiting for you. And imagine you didn't pray. You're in your car and an accident happened. You don't know where you end up. Prayer is a way also to predict our future, beloved. Prayer is a way we can leave everything in the hands of God. You wake up. God, protect this. Mo protect me this morning. No accidents on my way to work. Nothing, 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 nothing may take me away from your presence. Beloved, there's some characteristic traits that I go to God, and I see those traits are not holy. So I go to my Father and say, see this. This is a characteristic trait that I want to leave. Father, God, help me. And that has only been been changing in me through prayer because i took time to pray beloved relationships take time this is another thing i want to say relationships take time when you first come if when you first start with a spouse or with um someone it's very awkward in the beginning but through time once you start communicating every day and getting to know each other each and every day that's when you get to know each other on deeper meanings, deeper level, I can say. You start to know each other on deeper levels, that is only through prayer. You begin to know God only through prayer. Of course, we can't truly comprehend whatever God is and whoever he is. We truly can't comprehend because we are still flesh and God is up there. He's not only up there, but he is in us. So, of course, we can't truly understand everything God is doing in our life. But, but beloved, beloved, I'm telling you today, if you leave your life in the hands of God, He will show up. I always say that God will show up because if you pray continually, He will show up. Leave everything in the hands of God. Leave your family in the hands of God. Leave your kids. Leave your job. Leave your work. Leave tiny things you have to leave in the hands of God so he can make it bigger beloved pray every day prayer is the way we can only not conform into the pattern of this world this world is already ruined this world is full of darkness but through Christ we found the way the truth and the life through Christ we found meaning in our lives through Christ we find redemption through Christ. We found salvation. How can we not leave everything in the hands of God? Through Christ, He loved. No, the the God already loved us since the beginning. Before even Christ came on this earth, God already loved you. So just don't be afraid to go to your father when you have a situation, when you're facing a problem, when you're going through things. Don't be afraid to go to your father and leave yourself in the hands of God and leave everything in the hands of God leave your family in the hands of God I keep repeating this because it's very important it's very important as youth as parents as adults as teens it is very important to not forget about God to make time for your father things will come Things will always try to move us away from God. That's what the devil wants. The devil wants us to move away from God so he can reign in our lives. But beloved, the only, only true God who can reign in your life is the Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can reign, reign in your life. Leave everything in the hands of your Father and see how he will lift you up. Leave everything in the hands of the Father and see how He will deliver your enemies in your hands. Leave everything in the hands of the Father and see how He will go in the front line and fight for you. When David became king of Israel, the Philistines went to attack. And he inquired of God. David inquired of God means he prayed to God, shall I go or shall I not? Wherever you go, make sure to leave it in the hands of God. Whatever job you take, make sure you, leave, you inquire God first. Praise is also a way we inquire God. We put God in our lives. David asked, shall I go? Will I win? The, the Bible said that God answered him, yes. But he told him the ways he can go to defeat his enemy. Beloved, when, beloved, when you pray, God will make sure he will direct your life. And the Bible is also telling us that God was in front of them. 
God was in front of Israel and he was fighting alongside with them. So don't worry, beloved. When you bring a problem to God, when you bring a situation to God, he will fight for you. He will not only deliver the enemies in your hands, but he will also be on the front line, on the battle line, fighting alongside you because you put him, you inquired God in your life inquire God in your daily lives it's a daily routine it should become a daily routine to ask God for direction and that is only through prayer beloved pray every day leave your life in the hands of God if you leave God you leave your life in the hands of the devil and we already know what the devil does he would change us, but not in a way the Bible is telling us. He would change us so that the truth is moved away from us. We only see what we see is fit. Leave everything in the hands of God and watch him work wonders. Now we're going to go ahead and pray. This is a song called Make Room for Jesus. Make Room for Jesus. It's called Make Room by Jonathan and it is telling us you make time for whatever you treasure so make room for God as school is coming back our work is loaded our kids are going back to school us youth are going back to school as well pray with me through this song and say I will make room for you wherever I go whatever I'm doing I will make room for you after I finish singing, beloved, we're going to go ahead and pray. And pray about our lives. And pray and leave everything in the hands of God. Beloved, now we're going to go ahead and pray and ask God to be and live in you. Of course, the Spirit of God, the God, of God is already in us and is already living in us. Now we're going to go ahead and ask God to make our prayers stronger. We're going to go ahead and ask God that no matter what comes our way, no matter what tries to move him away from the picture of, of our life, away from the frames of our life and ask the Lord to strengthen us. No matter what comes our way, no matter what tries to get in the way of your relationship with your Father who are in heaven, say to that situation, move over. Say to your weakness to move over, your Instagram time to move over, your Facebook time to move over, your school activities to move over, whatever is happening around you to move over, whatever battle you're facing to move over. 
the problems to move away the situation to move away so that you can make time for your savior so that you can make time to your time for your father go ahead and pray oh god i'm coming to you oh god i'm coming to you during my school time i make room for you whatever i'm gonna do father god i make room for my savior i make room for the lord who loves me i make room for you father god all my tiktok time remove it away father god i pledge this this year i pledge this year i will not spend more time on my social media than the time i spend reading your word pledge to god this year i will not spend more time on facebook than i spend praying pray to god if i spend three hours on social media then i'll spend four hours reading your word if i spend three hours on movies then i'll spend five hours praying father god just pray to god just begin to pray to your father move away whatever's trying to come between you and me move away whatever's trying to move me away from your presence move it away from me so that i can rest in your presence so that at all times i'm in the presence of god so that all times i'm holy so that at all times i can speak with my father who listens who hears who delivers who fights who loves me be loved just go ahead and pray make room for your savior make room for your father make room for him because not one time will you go to your father and he will say wait uh wait first i'm gonna talk to john i'm gonna talk to matthews first then i'll come back to you not one time our lord will ever do that and not one time in the bible has it said that he will do that at all times if you come to him he will answer you he won't have to move things aside because nothing overloads him we are humans of course we have overloaded work we overload ourselves with so many things but our father no matter the work he has he's never overloaded he's never full-handed he's always empty-handed to receive he's always empty-handed to receive our prayers and speak to us go ahead and inquire your god and say to god Father, I want to put you in my life before I do anything, before I make a decision, before I go anywhere, before I take upon any job, I put you before anything, Father God. Inquire God in your life. No matter what, I will ask you first what you think, what I shall do before I go up against a situation. Maybe I'm not strong enough. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. This time has been given to you. This time has been given to me. So I'm going to go ahead and pray to my Father. Father, I leave everything in your hands. Show me a miracle. Show me, Father God. May I make time for you. Move away whatever is distracting me. Move away distractions from our life. The friends that are trying to come and distract us. The people that are trying to come and distract us. Whatever is in our way. The movies that come to distract us. The, the social media that comes to move us away from your presence. Father God, move them away from me. And may you show up. Speak to me. And I'll find a private time for the God with my Savior. I'll find a private place where I can just speak, where it can just be me and you. Where I will listen more than ask questions for the God. Where I will receive answers. Father God, I want to make room for you. Father God, you can move it over. Move it over, move it over, move it over, move it over. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're asking you. Father God, to move it over, move it over. The distraction of the devil is trying to come. The distraction of the devil is trying to throw at us. Move it over. The traps, the battles, move them over. And may you be the one, the first priority in our lives. We prioritize you before anything, Father God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen. I truly hope all of you really took this time seriously because that school year is already around the corner that school year maybe has started for all of you just know even through this small time that we spent that the lord already heard your prayer and he will start to move away whatever also you shall do the effort to make sure to discipline yourself ask for discipline from god ask for discipline for this year till 2023 Ask for discipline 
so you can spend more time with your father than more times with whatever the world is trying to give you. What God gives you will be far beyond whatever the world tries to throw at you, whatever the world tries to say it is good. God is great. God is good. And we thank him for his mercy, for his grace, for his love that endures forever, that is unconditional. Thank you all so much for joining me on Youth in Mission. You might see me again next week, or it might be someone else speaking to you. But just know through this school year, leave your life in the hands of God. For parents, pray for your kids and pray for yourselves as well. So you do not fall into the, tempt tempt into the temptation of this world, but be renewed again. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, share, and comment. And leave everything in the hands of God. I'm Mara Karima, and I thank you all so much for joining me again. May I see you next week or maybe someone else? But I can't wait to speak with you all again. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Goodbye.